So here we are today with this Heller model kit, Aristes Nazicornis, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but also known as the Rhinoceros Beetle. So this is a plastic model kit which we're going to build and do a paint job on. So there I am just getting the pieces ready there. Um, I've, I find it handy building these kits so it gives you an opportunity to try out paint jobs and practice with your painting and effects and all that type of thing. So anyway, on with the model. So we're assembling the model here for those that might have this model. It, I'll just go through the bits and pieces. So I'm just getting the legs ready there. And that's pieces 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 and 11. So I've just arranged them there. I don't want to get them mixed up. They sort of look the same, but I think they are slightly different. So you want to get them right. So we cut the pieces out, file down the rough edges to make them nice and smooth, ready for gluing. And there I am preparing the underbelly of the beetle, filing that down also. So we'll go through all the bits and file those down. So the underbelly is piece number one in the kit. Just filing away there. Best to prepare all your pieces so it makes it easy for um, gluing and you'll have a nice clean model once it's fully assembled. So make the horn there, that's pieces three and four, two pieces glued together and we're going to glue them together in a moment just getting them ready there. Just uh, gluing in the legs on the base or the underbelly. Got the model glue there and just applying just enough glue to glue it in place. You don't need too much, just enough of course. And just sticking those legs in the holes where they're supposed to go. So this piece has this this kit, this model kit has 13 pieces, so it's relatively straightforward and simple to assemble all the pieces together. So there we are, we've got our base complete there with the legs, the underbelly. Just gluing that horn together, the two piece the two pieces to make the horn of the beetle. The rhinoceros horn. So carefully gluing those pieces in place. Filing off. Filing off any excess edges. And we've got the head there, which is number, let's have a look at the instructions. Number two. Just cutting out the uh, main part of the body, the shell top shell which is number six following the edges off and there'll be two other little pieces the sort of antennae bit or the antenna bits two of those number both numbered five so there we are just going to glue the body together, the top half of the body to the bottom half of the body. Did I say I glued in the antenna? We haven't got to that bit yet, but we'll glue in those antenna, antennae in a moment. So just getting that top shell body armour part fixed to the top. I'm wiping any excess glue away with a cotton bud there, or a q-tip as you might say in America. Gluing in the head. Gluing in the head piece. Top of the head to the base. Making sure it's secure. And wiping off any excess glue.
So now we're sticking in the rhino horn. The rhino-esque nose. Which is obviously where it gets its name from. Rhinoceros beetle. Orestes nasicornis. You can tell my Latin isn't very good there. So we're wiping off any excess again. Excess glue. And now we'll stick in the antennae. One on either side. So just poking those in there. Inserting them in place. And that is pretty much the assembly complete. So now we're ready to start our paint job once the glue is cured and then we're ready to go so there we are we can see the piece fully assembled right now for the painting so Heller actually supplied two pots of paint um, sort of like a, a light lightish beigey color and a sort of darker beigey colored paint but the darker paint wasn't very appropriate um, or suitable for this job it was the wrong color I researched the beetle and it's more of a sort of a red color so even though I put the paint the darker brown onto the body there we will paint over that um, shortly in the video I use the lighter beige for the underbelly and areas where there's kind of bug fur there's a little area on top between the main body and the head which you can actually see there so I use the lighter beige for the coloring there but uh, there's no need well in my case here I decided I didn't need the darker brown so I went I actually painted over that with black so there we are there's some reference photos from the internet you can see the shell is a more of a sort of a reddish brown color so anyway I'm painting the underbelly there with the Heller lighter beige actually these supplied paints are quite thick as well I prefer painting with thinner paint so I use just ordinary acrylic so we got the black there and just water them down slightly to give them a bit of fluidity so there I am painting over that um, main body part and what we'll do also is we'll build, build up a few layers and we'll mix some red in with the black so what we're doing is blending the colors onto the model or on the model so put a bit of black on there and then a bit of red and we blend the colors on the model while the, while the, while the paint's still wet anyway at this moment we're just putting a coat of black black paint onto the areas that you can see there in the video so there we are there's the first layer complete We're going now over over the main part of the body again as you can see there and there we are we've got some cadmium red which will blend with black paint over the body on the top of the body so there we are you can see I'm applying the red paint to the model so I'll keep this part at normal speed because this is probably the most important part of the process with painting to get those shades gradients you almost get like a sort of an airbrushed effect without obviously using an airbrush so I build up layers so this is the first layer just blending the black in with the red what we want the colors to pop out a little bit or the red to pop out so I was painting the black around the edges and as you move in towards the body it becomes more red if that makes any sense I'm sort of like looking at my reference material to see where I where I want the colors and also kind of dry brushing some red over the legs but it's but not how I would normally dry brush the the paint is 
um, a lot wetter than what I would use on, say, concrete statues and other casts and items. It all depends on what you're painting, what's appropriate for you, for your model, and what materials the model is made from, and all that type of thing. So there are continue blending the black and red there over the shell. And continuing on the head there. Just blending those colours in together carefully. While it's still wet, of course, so the colours can easily blend together. Acrylics dry relatively fast, so that's one of the reasons I sort of build up a layer, but I like building up layers anyway, because you tend to get a bit of a bit of depth to your paint jobs. So just touching up the head there, and sort of highlighting the highlight areas in red. I'm trying to get like the more raised the area the higher the highlight, the redder the colour will be on those highlights and then sort of grading out into the black around the edges. So, like I said earlier, these model kits, I've, I find them handy to practice paint jobs. I quite I enjoy um, assembling the, the models also. Obviously, it's nice making your own sculptures and models from scratch. I prefer doing that at the end of the day. So, now we're on the underside again. I'm just going to put another coat of the Heller beige colour on the underbelly just to solidify that colour. Give it a nice solid base. We'll let that dry and we'll come back to that later. So I'm building up another layer again of the black and red using the same technique, blending on the model with the paintbrush of course. Blending in around the head and on the head. On the horn. Touching up areas. Touching up the red on the legs there. Back to the body and head and that's where we are so far just painting on the underside of the legs there as you can see same again with the red with a kind of dry brush thing, sort of dry brush, half dry, half wet. Now we're using some burnt umber, and we're going to use the burnt umber or brown paint as a wash over the underbelly and the furry areas of the beetle. So we'll put a wash over the top and then we'll wipe off the excess paint with, well I've got some cotton wool there but you can use a rag anything which is suitable so we just wipe out the areas there to reveal the highlights and that beige colour paint underneath so it kind of brings out the detail 
Makes it kind of natural and authentic also. So just working in areas there, as you can see, as the paint does dry relatively quickly. Working over the full area of the underbelly. And there we are, so that's the underbelly finished. Although I do put another coat on that, but I don't think it's in the video. So put two coats on there. There's just a little furry bit between the head and the body, so that's the same colour and the brown wash over the top. And where the sort of cheek parts of the head meet the horn. There's just a subtle paint wash in there. Just speeding up the process of the paint dryer with the hair dryer as you can see there. Touching up the model, so you can see we're doing the black and red blend again. So this will be the final layer for the black and red. And just generally touching up the whole model. So there we are, that's pretty much job done. And that is job done. So there we are, one Aristes Nazi Cornis Rhinoceros Beetle. I think it almost looks real. So there it is after it's been completed. And you can see the pictures in the bottom right hand corner, also photos. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed the video. And see you soon. Thanks for watching and over and out.